So Alabama loses in an absolute heartbreaker to their rival Tennessee on the road. And today, we need to talk about it. Because quite frankly, Alabama hasn't been the same since that first half of the Georgia game. Where in the second half, Georgia came back, but Alabama clinched up the victory. Against Van Deep, they dropped the ball. Against South Carolina, that game was far too close for comfort. And now... Alabama staring down the barrel of five and two with some big games left on the schedule. We need to break it down. We need to talk about what's going on and everything in between. But before we can, as always, y'all know the drill. I have got to hear from you. Hop down to the comments. Why for yes, in for no. Were you surprised that Alabama lost to Tennessee in the manner that they did? And let me know what you're thinking. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. Hit that bell notification as I do constant college football content. You don't want to miss any of it. And if you enjoyed the content, be sure to like and comment down below. But having said all that, let's jump right into this. And where do we begin? Because going into this game, the matchup I was most excited to see was Tennessee's defense, which is one of the top defenses in all of college football, against Alabama's offense. Because outside of the South Carolina game, Alabama's offense has been really good. And against Vandy, they got off to a cold start, but then whenever they had the opportunity, they scored. They only possessed the ball for 17 minutes and managed to get 35 points up on the board, including some wasted possessions. So Alabama's offense, whenever they're clicking, has shown they are an incredibly fun unit to watch. But against Tennessee, they could get absolutely nothing going. Preseason, if you would have asked me the matchup I was most excited to see, the answer would have been Tennessee's offense against Alabama's defense. And as it turns out, as the game progressed, that was the matchup I was most looking forward to watch. A lot of questions have been asked about Alabama's defense. We have talked about some of the concerns of Alabama's defense, but against Tennessee, they played pretty well. Tennessee has got a ferocious rushing attack with multiple running backs that are highly efficient and a quarterback that has some mobility as well. It's a veer and shoot based offense that wants to go fast. They've got some talent on the outside. And in the first half of this game, Alabama had them stifled. Alabama's defense created momentum. Alabama's offense unfortunately killed momentum. In football, it's a game of inches. It's a game of X's and O's. But it's also a game of momentum. Alabama's defense created that momentum. And once again, Alabama's offense killed that momentum. And one of the most perplexing things to me was that in the first half of this game, Jalen Milrow had thrown the ball 27 times. That didn't seem like a sustainable game plan. Sure, Jalen Milrow has had games where he has played really high-quality football this year. There is no denying that. I actually thought he had his worst game of the year against South Carolina until this game came. Because even though I didn't like throwing the ball 27 times whenever you have two running backs that I do believe are very good running backs, I would have loved to have seen the offense lean on the run game a bit more, try and impose their will. Because even if it's not working initially, you stick with it. That way you attempt to wear down their defensive front. Tennessee's defense is really good at all three levels. But their defensive front has some dudes on it. And some of those dudes were able to tee off getting sacks or getting pressure when Jalen dropped back. So one of the ways you can try and mitigate that is by running the football. But Alabama didn't do so consistently. That, to me, was perplexing. Especially when we talk about the fact that even though I don't like that you threw so many times in the first half, there were opportunities to be had. But Alabama didn't capitalize on them. So when I'm looking at Alabama's offense, I think from a play-calling perspective, even if you're in RPO and the quarterback is choosing not to give it to the running back, that's on you then as the offensive coordinator to say, no, you know what, this is a run play. The next few plays are run plays. I'm going to take control. That's on the offensive coordinator. But it's not on the offensive coordinator. When something is dialed up, it's there and the execution isn't there. And for those of you that have been around the channel for any extended period of time, you know how high I am on Jalen Milrow. 
how excited I have been for him, how his progression through parts of this year have been undeniable. In the Georgia game, everybody was talking preseason, he can't make this throw or that throw. Well, in the Georgia game, he made every throw necessary. Through multiple games this year, he has flexed the progression. I said after last week, I thought South Carolina was his worst performance this year. And after Tennessee, I was mistaken. Because Tennessee is by far and about the worst performance we've seen from Jalen Milrow this year. And in some of the aspects of playing quarterback, it almost looked like he had regressed to last year. And I take absolutely no pleasure in saying this. Because this is a player that I root for, I will continue to root for, and I have rooted for. Now, I also don't think he was the only one that didn't have a good game. But the fact of the matter is, is that far too often you had opportunities, even though I thought you threw the ball way too many times. And if anybody wants to say, well, it's an RPO that's on the court. Well, if, if that's true, then it's on the offensive coordinator to say, hey, this isn't working. We're going to run the ball. We're going to lean on him. We're going to try and wear him down and then operate this passing game later in the game once we feel like our offensive line is really clicking, they're humming, they've got momentum, we've worn them down a little bit, we've leaned on them a little bit, then we're going to try throwing the ball at a higher rate. That's on the offensive coordinator. Now, understand this. I'm not putting 100% of the blame on the offensive coordinator because far too many times you had an open wide receiver and an inaccurate throw cost a catch. In fact, during one of the waning moments of the game, Jalen Milrow had Ryan Williams wide open and overshot him by a lot. And that wasn't a one-off. Several times, Milrow either threw off his back foot or was jumping while he threw the ball, which was puzzling. And in this game, a game where everybody had questions about Alabama's defense, they showed up. And you can tell me, hey, they gave up this many yards in the second half against a very good Tennessee rushing attack. Yes, you're right. But at a certain point, you can only hold so long. You can only create so much momentum for your offense. If they don't capitalize on it, it's not on you. Alabama had opportunity after opportunity after opportunity and squandered them. Now, don't get it mistaken. This isn't me saying that Tennessee didn't do a good job at taking away some opportunities. They did. But the truth of the matter is, I don't think Alabama helped themselves. And I think I can further prove this whenever we look. Alabama had 15 penalties in this game. Alabama is currently ranked number 129 in the nation in terms of penalties. That's not good. That means they're one of the most penalized team in the nation. Only a handful of teams are more penalized. And while this is a problem that has got to get fixed, for anybody that wants to say this is 100% on Kalen DeBoer, remember this. We've been talking about Alabama getting too many penalties for two or three years now. Now, this is on a different level. I concede you that. No arguments from me there. But this is not a new issue for this team. Was it as bad as I've seen it this weekend? Yes, and I grant you that. No arguments from me, but this is not a new issue. So Alabama, they have a lot to figure out. Going into this game... And before South Carolina, people were thinking, hey, Alabama's defense has got to get things figured out, but the offense can give them time. After the past game, I don't know that people will feel like that anymore. I think Alabama's defense really had a good game, especially up front where I thought LT Overton, Lawson, these guys played really well. But Alabama's offense didn't carry their weight. And I think that the last four drives for Alabama are really telling. Shout out to Clint Lamb for this. He tweeted this out, and I do want to give the proper citation for this. This is from Clint Lamb. Follow him on Twitter. Excellent analysis. Excellent analysis. Excellent content. 
but I do want to give proper citation. What I am about to say is something that Clint Lamb had tweeted out. And it was Bama's four drives after they had gotten to 17 points. You had three plays for four yards and a punt. You had three plays for negative two yards and a punt. You had four plays for one yard, loss of downs. Your defense then made a critical stop in Tennessee territory, holding Tennessee only to a field goal when the offense gave them the ball in really advantageous position, allowing the offense an opportunity to go get the game. One play, zero yards, interception. So what happens from here? Because we've talked enough about the past. Where does Alabama go from here? Well, you have another team this weekend in Missouri who, like Tennessee, has taken a loss they didn't need to take. And they're going to be playing, dare I say, desperation ball. Not that they need to play desperate, but they know they can't afford another loss. Alabama really can't afford another loss. Luckily for Alabama, if you win out, LSU is currently a highly ranked team, which can get you an advantageous win if you are to get it. But Alabama has got some things that have to be fixed because right now they're undisciplined. You're not going to beat LSU in Death Valley with 15 penalties whenever you have four drives to seal the game and you get three yards in four drives. That's not going to happen. And remember, on the drive where Alabama didn't convert the fourth down, there was a penalty that set them back, and it was a fourth and 22. So we could actually take away yards if I wanted to be super technical about it. Alabama's got to really have a moment where they look in the mirror. Because the season isn't over. Is this ideal? No. But it's college football. This is a transition year, which is one thing I think that the fans need to understand. This is a transition year. This is a team that is learning a new scheme under a new coaching staff. Yes, it's talented, but it is a transition year. Everybody should remember that. Heck, a few years ago, Nick Saban had a team that included Bryce Young, Will Anderson, Dallas Turner, and they didn't make the college football playoffs. Now, I'm not saying this to down Nick Saban. He's the greatest coach of all time. There is no question about it. I am saying this to lay forth expectations. And anybody can say, oh, well, this team is more talented. On paper, sure. But is it really more talented than that team that included Bryce Young, Dallas Turner, Brian Branch, Will Anderson, Kool-Aid? Is it really? You tell me. Is it really more talented than that team? I don't know. I don't necessarily think I can say that it's exponentially more talented. Alabama's got a lot of talent on this team, but a lot of it is freshmen. And they are going to be phenomenal players. But just as the rest of this team is learning a new scheme, they are learning college football. So do not misunderstand my argument right now for saying, oh, now Ty's saying Alabama's not talented. Alabama is extremely talented. But we've seen extremely talented teams struggle. This is an extremely talented team that has got a lot of youth at key positions. Right now, your best offensive weapon is a true freshman that should be a senior in high school. Your secondary is a bunch of players outside of Malachi Moore that don't have a lot of experience under their belt. That's the reality of the situation. In key positions, you don't have experience. You have talent, but they're learning. And they're all going through a scheme change. So for Alabama, this week, it's incredibly important that they figure out who they are. Because right now, the most worrying thing for Alabama is I don't know that they have an identity. So that's up to the team. That's up to the coaching staff to figure out an identity. Who are you? Who are you going to be? Should this have happened after Vandy? Sure, sure. 
But I also think that it was probably easier for players in that room. I'm just projecting. I'm just giving my opinion here. I don't know. Before anybody gets mad, I'm just giving my opinion here. I think it was probably easier to rationalize the Vandy loss because you had just come off the Georgia loss, and I think some people in the locker room probably felt like, ah, we just slept on it. We're still Bama. We just slept. We got that big win last weekend. We, we were really feeling it. We slept on it. Then South Carolina happened. Then Tennessee happened. And now it's time to really take an inward look and figure out who you are and what you want to do. But for those saying Kalen DeBoer is not the guy, I could not disagree more. The guy didn't forget how to coach. He was just in the national championship game. He inherited a program that was 4-8 and eight, and within two years was in the national championship. There is a lot changing right now. Brand new defense, brand new offense, and a team that quite frankly is undisciplined. And while, yes, that does fall on Kalen DeBoer, you're not going to hear an argument from me there, we were having conversations about this being an undisciplined team even when Nick Saban was here. So is it a Kalen DeBoer problem? Yes, yes, it's the head coach. I won't argue with you there. But can we also be honest if I'm giving you that and you meet me halfway and say, you know what, even under the GOAT, they were undisciplined. Maybe there's something happening here. I don't know what it is, but I think this is a key week for Alabama to figure it out as they have a tough stretch of games ahead of them. Hop down to the comments, let me know what you're thinking. That's it. See ya. Thank you.